time. He came up to me and he said, nobody will enter paradise unless he pronounces the name of Jesus. Well, I, you know, anybody who goes to seminary school, even the first year, knows that Jesus never said the word Jesus. He couldn't have. It didn't exist yet. He couldn't have said the word God. It didn't exist yet. There was no English until the Normans invaded the Saxons in the year 1066 AD. Prior to that, which was about a thousand years after Jesus, well, prior to that, that whole thousand years, what were Christians saying? What did they say? And if they were Arab Christian, I promise you, I promise you, they were saying Allah. Because they still say it today. And if you say, oh, guys, guys, full of it, I got news for you. It's real easy to prove me right or wrong. Anybody ever been in a hotel or motel in your life? What do they always have in the drawer right by the dresser? Huh? Put there by the Gideon Society, true? Open it up. Take out their free Bible. You can take it home, by the way. I got a nice collection. You take it home. <laughs> Open it up. In the very beginning, they're proud of the fact that they're donating and putting them out. And by the way, I'm happy they're doing it. I am. They're doing a good job. I was in India, which is about 70% Hindu, 30% Muslim, and 0.000 Christian. Some real tiny percent Christian. Yet every hotel, even the Muslim hotels over there, have the Gideon Bible in there. It's amazing. They do hard work. They <laughs> go. Page three, when you get back to it, they're proud also of the fact that they've translated to so many languages the Bible. So they give you example, alphabetical order, Afrikaans language, and you can see it. A sample, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And then, number two, Arabic, Arabic. For God so loved the world, they get, well, wait a minute, it said Allah. So, we know that the word Allah has been around a long time, been used by Christians and Jews to talk about the one God. How many here are Bible students? Anybody study the Bible alone? No, sometimes not. Okay, in the Old Testament, Elohim. Yes? You know what I'm talking about? Okay. Arabic, it's Allahumma. It's the plural form of God when you speak Elohim. Allahumma. But it doesn't mean more than one. It's the royal plural. As in the king says, we decree the following decree. So whenever you find we in the Old Testament or we in the Quran, it's what? Out of respect or dignity. But it doesn't mean that there's a bunch of gods sitting up there trying to decide what to do next. Okay, got all that out of the way. We talked about the name a little bit. The name Isa is the name used in the Christian Bible. Isa is the name used in the Christian Bible for a baby who was born of a virgin by the name of Mariam. And that's exactly what we have in the Quran. This. This is a baby born to a woman who has never been married, never touched any man, touched her, or vice versa. She's a virgin, yet she gives birth. Any Muslim who denies this is no longer a Muslim, because it's in the Quran. And if you're a real Muslim and you know the Quran, you know it's in there, you can't deny that. You have to accept this mu'ajiza, which means miracle, miracle birth. Immaculate conception, meaning no man touched her, and the miracle birth. How many people here don't believe that such a thing could happen? Don't believe it. Okay. You can't. Then you couldn't be, in this state, you couldn't be agreeing with what's being mentioned in the Quran or in the Bible. But you're still welcome to be here, by the way. No problem. No extra charge. You, you, have, you have the right to have a different opinion, by the way. We're still in America. Blah, blah, blah. Now, at the same time, though, that's not where it stops for the Muslims. We believe more. We believe the first miracle, of course, is the conception and then the birth and then this miracle of speaking from the cradle. But it goes on. There are many miracles associated with him even when he was a boy. That we have stories that have either been lost or dropped out of the Bible. How many of you know what's the word apocrypha? Apocrypha. Apocrypha means that which is hidden from the public. There are a number of books, for whatever reason the church is deemed worthy or unworthy, have dropped those books out. 
Recently, the Catholic Church has announced and published some new textbooks about the Bible and teaching the Bible, where they're now taking some more stuff out, even now. I'm not making it up. You can go online at bbc.com or whatever it is for the thing. They have a whole section on there about what the Catholic Church is saying as of last month about the book of Revelations. Anything against the Jews, that's out. Anything that's uh, against homosexuals, that's out. And so on. They want to be totally PC, and they said, this is no problem. Because if the Pope says it, you know, that's okay, it's cool. And I, I know, by the way, that Louisiana has some Catholics, so I'm maybe trading on thin ice with some folks. That's how it goes. Alhamdulillah. <coughs> Let's come back now and let us talk about our Jesus, the one we have in Islam. We believe, as he said, which we quoted to you, that he was never overbearing or harsh in his treatment of his mother. God made me kind to my mother and not overbearing and not miserable. According to our understanding, this means he would never say something like, what do I have to do with you today, woman? We don't have that in our book. And if you have it in your book, no, we don't have that. If you have that God is saying in your book that Jesus' first miracle, or in the Gospel of John, is to take water and turn it into wine at a wedding, we don't have that. In fact, in Islam, alcohol is something that's forbidden. And also, we have other prophets that we put up very, very, very high. And we don't accuse them of such things as getting drunk, taking off their clothes and laying around, or even, and sorry to mention this, but even sleeping with their own daughters. We don't have such a thing in Islam. This is not a, this is not a subject that could even be entertained for a second. It's not something we would open up as a rational discussion in Islam because we put our prophets up so high. We put them up so high. <clears throat> but yet, in the case of Jesus, we also put him up very high, but we take him out of the status of God or Son of God. But for sure, whatever's after that, we'll say yes. Not God, not son of a God, but certainly better than us, better than me, for sure. We have the highest regard for all of the prophets, but we may no, make no distinction between any of them. This is not permissible in Islam, to prefer a prophet over another prophet, or to consider that one didn't deliver the message correctly, or that he did something self-serving, or told people, hey, I got a new religion, I'm God, worship me. These are not characteristics of the prophets in Islam. They are a brotherhood, a prophethood, where they all bring the same message. I'd like to continue, though, talking specifically about what the Quran says about the prophet Isa, Jesus. It says more than a prophet, as far as the description of him. It said he is Kalamatullah. This means he is the word of God. Translated to Kone Greek, Logos. Logos means word. And he's the word of God. Because whenever God wants anything, he merely says, be. And it is. Kun, kun, is it in the Arabic? Yes. For us, it's easy to resolve another issue. The spirit of Allah. When it says, the Ruh Qudus. Literally, spirit, rule is actually spirit or soul. Soul. Could be soul. Kudus is sacred or holy. Al Quds is what we call the Holy Land. If you said the Holy Land is Jerusalem, this is called Al Quds. So the Arabs, and I'm talking about, again, Christian Arabs say Al Quds. They're talking about the Holy Land. So that's the word. The Quran speaks of the Holy Spirit. Very, very clearly says, Ruh Kudus. What is the Holy Spirit? Is it Jesus? Mm. Actually, I would like for you to look in the Bible, if you have an English Bible, and look at the story in Matthew of the angel who comes.